thanks for the introduction. Um, I'd like to introduce a few extensions we developed at this MIT. And um, they are very simple extensions that only do one thing. So I hope I can go through them very fast. Um, let's start with the first extension. It's called um, ID provider. And it's a parser function that can be used to generate random IDs, for example, UUIDs or other short strings and um, to generate increment, incrementing numbers. Um, it's a generic extension. It has no dependencies and it even has an API. Um, so you can basically use your wiki as your central, central ID authority. So other systems can draw IDs from your wiki if they need to. And of course, share, for example, the increments. Um, the, it stores its state in the database, and therefore it's faster than you, for example, if you use semantic forms unique number. Um, and we use it a lot in semantic forms to generate um, page names and page, yeah, page names. Um, and it's especially nice if you're using semantic title extension. So some examples. You um, use the ID provider, random function, and you will get a UUID string. And if you hit refresh, you will get a new one. Yeah. And you can also use shorter random numbers, which are pretty random too. And if you want, you can also get increments. So if I hit refresh here, um, it will become 58. And you can also scope those increments. For example, issue, issues have a different uh, increment uh, than projects. So we've got issue 115 and project 13. Um, there are some more options, for example, padding and stuff like that. So you can get nice page titles. Um, the second, ex or yeah, do we can do questions right now? Yeah. Um, the scope is a, must it be a namespace, or can you do? It you can a use any string. Okay. Yeah. And these uh, uh, random IDs are unique. Yeah. Also, especially if you use new IDs, they should in theory be unique through the whole universe. I don't believe that, but <laughs> okay. So the next uh, uh, extension is called substi Substitutor. I think it's a really weird extension. Um, it's for generic string substitution. Basically, it's a tag, like you see here. And it takes the content of the tag, eval evaluates it through the parser, and stores it as plain text uh, in that wiki page. So you can calculate one string once and keep it forever at that state. That makes, for example, sense with IDs. Um, I've got one example where we've got a default field where we use a random UUID through the ID provider. And the default um, link is generated once and then it stays that way. Because if you use a function without substitute, it will always change with a page refresh, and that wouldn't make sense for an ID if it's changing again. Questions about that? <laughs> What's the difference between this and the subs parser function? Uh, what? What's the difference between this tag and the subs part, uh, not parser function, whatever that means? I'm not completely sure. Um, uh, I think I was trying it out and it wasn't working in some context, I can't remember. So, uh, but I already had that extension, so I continue to use it. Okay. Um, the next extension is more difficult. Um, maybe you know the case that um, if data in one page, semantic data in one page changes, um, this uh, another page needs to be updated. Um, 
because it relies on the data it has on the first page. And um, yeah, uh, the extension was uh, can automate this by uh, triggering null edit on all pages uh, that are dependent on the current page. And you can define those dependencies through an ask query selection, so it's pretty flexible, you can do a lot with it. And it also avoids cycles, so if you're doing, uh, having graph dependencies, it will stop at the right points. Okay, and there are some use cases like self-dependencies, so a page, for example, needs to calculate a sum of some things you've already created, uh, then you need to save a page twice to get the right calculation, so you can handle that. Um, it looks like that. We've got a semantic dependency and its target is the full page name, so it's itself. You can have dependencies on other page pages, just provide the name or through an argument. Or you could um, provide a query, so every page that is a part of the current page um, that this is evaluated and those will get updated. And if you really need it, you can have and and or conditions, so you can have pretty much any ask query you want. Yeah, I, so we use it, it, for example, for issues where we're tracking how long have we worked on it and we want to store the total sum of hours we worked. Or it's nice when we have tree structures and we want to move parts of the tree to another part of the tree, then a lot of things have to be recalculated. Um, that works. Okay. And um, yeah, behind the scenes it uses a new SMW hook, so it looks for actual data changes, not just wiki text changes. And it's not using the job queue. Someone was already asking me that. Um, that's a design decision. And if some of those decisions are not right for you. There are two alternative um, extensions, one by Cindy and one by Remco. So um, I've linked those in the extension page too. Questions about that? that? That's it. That's still running in another use case, for um, So it still, still, still helps you in, in getting data updates already. Yeah. Even with that other feature added. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, the last two extensions are very simple. One is just a QR, um, QR code generating extension and it's <coughs> A little bit more lightweight because it generates those codes on the fly and embeds it right into the HTML. So it does not need to generate images and store them as media wiki files. And it supports PNG and SVG. It has no external dependencies. And yeah, this is a PNG example. And that's an SVG example. Uh, those are better in scale but PNG is better um, because you can save it as a file very easily, so it's a matter of choice. Yeah, I think that it's a pretty clear extension. Um, and the last one is Simple Tooltip. Um, it's a little bit older now. Um, I've made this one because no tooltip extension was working with semantic forms multiple templates multi-instance templates because they don't get an update and you will lose your um, hover event. And yeah, it looks like that. So you can have text, tooltips, you can use icons or you can use images. So, and it has no dependencies so you don't need semantic forms or you can use it in any context if you like. Yeah, that's it.